قال الله عز وجل في كتابه العزيز ولا تدع من دون الله ما لا ينفعك ولا يضرك فإن فعلت فإنك إذا من الظالمين وإن يمسسك الله بضر فلا كاشف له إلا هو وإن يردك بخير فلا راد لفضله يصيب به من يشاء من عباده وهو الغفور الرحيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء قال عليه الصلاة والسلام من لم يرحم الناس لم يرحمه الله وجاء أعرابي إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله أريد أن يرحمني ربي يوم القيامة فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام ارحم نفسك وارحم عباده يرحمك ربك يوم القيامة ارحم نفسك وارحم عباده يرحمك ربك يوم القيامة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. My respected elders and my brothers in Islam, the youngsters, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He has many many attributes. There's 99 that we know of. وَلِلَّهِ أَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى There's 99 that we know of, but then there's many more that we don't know of also. And among the attributes of Allah, there are certain attributes which are very harsh. المتكبر الجبار المنتقم That show Allah to be a very, a very harsh. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He began the Qur'an for us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose two very specific qualities of His and introduced Himself by those qualities. He says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Because although Allah may be very fierce and ferocious and mutakabbir and strong and... But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decided in rahmati taghlibu ghatabihi My rahma, as great as my wrath is, my rahma is more than my wrath. My rahma is more than my anger. Allah is rahim. Allah is kareem. Allah is ra'oof. Allah is kind, Allah is loving, Allah is clement, Allah is merciful. Allah Ta'ala doesn't hate anybody and He doesn't allow us to hate anybody either. Allah Ta'ala doesn't hate anybody. Allah Ta'ala loves every human being. He doesn't like the kufr of the kafir, but as a human being, Allah loves him. وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ kufr. He doesn't like the disbelief of the disbeliever. But as a human being, Allah Ta'ala loves every human being. And out of His love for humanity, Allah sent some of the greatest people to take a licking at the hands of some of the worst people. He didn't send the people to the Prophet. He told the Prophet to go to them to the people. 
Allah is Rahim. Allah is very kind. Allah is very merciful. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that on the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala will say, Akhriju min al-nar. Akhriju min al-nar. Man dhakarani yawman aw khafani fi muqam. Take out from the fire of Jahannam anybody who said my name even once. Aw khafani fi muqam. Or on one occasion abstained from a sin and had fear of me on one occasion. Once Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was brought some prisoners. Utiya Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bisabiyin. Some prisoners of war. فَجَاءَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ مِّنَ السَّبِي تَلْتَمِسُ عَنْ وَلَدِهَا One female prisoner, she came and she was searching about the other prisoners as if she was looking for her infant. And she found her baby. فَأَخَذَتْهُ She found her baby, she grabbed her baby. فَأَلْزَقَتْهُ بِبَطَنِهَا فَأَرْضَعَتْهُ She took her baby, she put her baby to her chest. She began to breastfeed her child. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was watching, sahaba were watching. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says to the sahaba, أَتَرَوْنَ هَذِهِ طَارِحَةً وَلَدَهَا فِي النَّارِ Do you think that this woman would ever take this child and just throw it into a fire? Sahaba said, لَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ No, it's not possible. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَاللَّهُ أَرْحَمُ بِعِبَادِهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ بِوَلَدِهَا That I swear by Allah, Allah is more merciful to all of his slaves than she is to this child. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَعَدَنِي رَبِّي Allah Ta'ala promised me. And who's the one making the promise? Allah. وَعَدَنِي رَبِّي أَنْ يُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي سَبْعِينَ أَلْفًا لَا حِسَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا عَذَابٍ Allah Ta'ala told Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and gave him his word. He told him and gave him his word that Allah will enter into Jannah from the Ummah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 70,000 people without any hisab, without any azab. 70,000. So now it doesn't seem very exciting because Sahaba were 124,000. So 70,000 and 124,000 do the math. <laughs> Where are we? But the hadith is not finished. With these 70,000, with each 1,000 of them, 70,000 more. With each 1,000, مَعَ كُلِّ أَلْفٍ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفًا And as if that was not enough, وَثَلَاثَ حَثَيَاتٍ مِنْ حَثَيَاتِ رَبِّي I will show you what a حَثَيَات looks like. Not that Allah's حَثَيَات looks like this. A حَثَى means a handful. I say handful like this because my hand has only four fingers and one thumb. Allah Ta'ala, we don't know what his hand looks like. And we don't know how big his hand is. All we know is that he has two right hands. Allah Ta'ala said, I will also enter into Jannah from your hand, from your ummah, three handfuls from the handfuls of Allah. Three handfuls from the handfuls of Allah. So Allah Ta'ala is mean. Allah Ta'ala hates us. Oh, my respected brothers and my elders in Islam, Allah Ta'ala is kind. Allah Ta'ala is loving. Allah Ta'ala is merciful. Allah Ta'ala is clement. Allah Ta'ala is relenting. Allah Ta'ala is forgiving. Allah Ta'ala is merciful. He is compassionate. He is caring. He loves every human being. He fashioned each human being with his own hands. Allah Ta'ala takes great pride takes great pride in this human being. Allah Ta'ala Himself says in the Qur'an, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ One person came and asked Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, that a man said to his wife, if you are not more beautiful than the moon, then أَمْرِ الطَّالِقْ You have talaq. So they asked other ulama what to do in this situation. If you are not more 
glorious than the moon, more beautiful than the moon, then you get. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi says, no, no, she is not divorced. He said, how come? Said, Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ Most beautiful, even more beautiful than the moon is insan. How Allah Ta'ala? وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمٍ so my respected brothers and my elders, Allah Ta'ala is kind, Allah Ta'ala is loving, Allah Ta'ala is merciful. Even by mistake, if somebody's bad deeds ended them up into Jahannam somehow, somehow, very unfortunate person and somehow they ended up into Jahannam, even in the fire of Jahannam, Allah Ta'ala will find excuses to have mercy on them. Inna rajulain, mimman udkhila nar Two people who were thrown into the fire of Jahannam. In Jahannam, they're screaming and yelling at the top of their lungs. Screaming, screaming. Allah Ta'ala says to the angels, Bring them to me. Take them out. When they were both brought in front of Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala says to them, Why are you screaming and yelling for? They said, we're screaming and yelling so that you can have raham, have mercy on us. Allah Ta'ala says to these two, Rahmati lakuma an tantaliqa fatulqiya anfusakuma haythu kuntuma min nar My mercy for the two of you is you go right back where you came from and throw yourself right back into the fire. Fayantaliqan they both turn their backs and they both walk back towards the fire. Fayulqi ahaduhuma nafsahu. One of them will throw himself back inside the fire. Fayaj'aluha alayhi bardan wa salama. Allah Ta'ala will make the fire of Jahannam cool and comfortable for him. Wa amman akhar. The second person, fala yulqi nafsahu. He will stand at the corner of Jahannam. He's not throwing himself in. Allah Ta'ala will call him. Ask him, ما منعك أن تلقي نفسك كما ألقى صاحبك What stopped you from throwing yourself in? Like your buddy threw himself back in. He says, Ya Rabbi, oh my Rabb, إني لأرجو منك أن لا تعيدني فيها بعد ما أخرجتني. He says, oh Allah, I have hope from you that once you took me out once from Jahannam, you won't ask me to go back in. Allah Ta'ala says to him, لَكَ رَجَاوُكَ فَيُدْخَلَانِ الْجَنَّةِ جَمِيعًا Allah Ta'ala says to him, you get what you hoped for, him and his partner both will be allowed entry into Jannah. My respect to Allah, how much kinder can Allah Ta'ala be? Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, on the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will call the servant. Allah Ta'ala will call him and he will stand like a baby goat with his legs shivering in front of Allah Ta'ala. I'm just going to translate the words of the hadith again, the meaning Allah Ta'ala himself knows what it means. Allah Ta'ala will put his wing over him. What does Allah's wing look like? Allah knows best. Sometimes he says arms, sometimes he says wings, sometimes he says shoulder. There's no need for us to try to picture it in our mind. Anyhow, Allah Ta'ala will conceal him from all the rest of the people on the Day of Judgment. Allah Ta'ala will make him admit in front of Allah every single sin he committed in his life. وَيَقُولُوا تَعْرِفُ ذَمَّ كَذَا وَكَذَا فِي يَوْمِ كَذَا وَكَذَا Remember on this day, this time you did this sin? Remember on this day, this time, this place you did this sin? And Allah will make him admit to every single sin that he ever did in his life. وَرَآ فِي نَفْسِهِ أَنَّهُ هَلَكَ He will think to himself, I'm doomed, I'm finished, I'm gone. فَلَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَلَى وَصَيْ تَهِمْ إِنِّي سَتَرْتُهَا عَلَيْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَأَنَا أَغْفِرُ هَذَا كَالْيَوْمِ In dunya, these sins were not known to anybody other than myself and yourself. I had hid your sins from all of humanity and today I have decided to forgive you. 
my respected brothers and my elders. Allah Ta'ala is so kind, so clement, so merciful. Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, لَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْكَافِرُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ لَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْكَافِرُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ مَا قَنَطَ مِنْ جَنَّتِهِ أَحَدٍ if the non-believer knew how merciful and kind Allah was, even the non-believer would think that there's a place for him in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a policy that those who show kindness to others, Allah will show special kindness to them. Those who show kindness to others, Allah will show kindness to them. And when we say kindness to others, I'm not limiting that kindness and Allah is not limiting that kindness to other Muslims. To other Muslims, there was a woman in Bani Israel who did the most awful of things as her main source of business. And one day when she saw a thirsty dog and she took off her leather shoe and went into the well and filled up her shoe with water and brought it to feed the thirsty dog, Allah Ta'ala gave wahi to the Nabi of that time that Allah Ta'ala forgave her and entered her into Jannah. For having mercy, not. She didn't do khidmat of the Nabi. She didn't feed water to the Nabi. She didn't feed water to a wali. She didn't feed water to some alim or some big sheikh. She gave water not even to a cow or a cat or a horse. She gave water to a dog the second most impure animal after Khinzir. And Allah Ta'ala decided she should go to Jannah. Just for having mercy, there was one king in Iraq. Long, long, long time ago, hundreds, hundreds of years ago, not recently, hundreds of years ago. And he was a very tyrant king, very mean and very rough with everybody and everybody was afraid of him. One day he went out hunting. And while he was out hunting, he saw a dog in the forest and the dog was wet and the dog had scrapes on it so probably got in a fight with another dog or something and it was wet so he told his, his, his guards that were with him servants said take this dog and just put it back to the palace and we'll see what we can do to help this dog when we get back and they finished his hunting trip and he came back to the palace and in the room that he was sitting in, closer to the fire, he spread a, just a little piece of cloth and he put the dog on the cloth and he threw some scraps of bread and some meat. And after a few days, the dog healed. And also after a few days, this king died. So one pious person of that time saw the king in the dream. And he saw that this king was enjoying nice clothing and his face was bright and he was being dealt with in a very honorable manner. And he was confused. How is this? You're a tyrant king and you, you, you did injustice all your life and you were mean to the people. And then this king told him that, yes, I was a tyrant king. Yes, I was mean. And yes, I had all these bad qualities that you said. But Allah Ta'ala called me. And Allah Ta'ala called me and said to me, oh, you mean king, you were a dog. And we sent to you one of our dogs. And because you had mercy on our dog, we had mercy on you. And Allah Ta'ala arranged for his maqfirah. My respected brothers and my elders, to have concern for humanity, to have love, to have... And one, one type of concern is to be, to be concerned that my neighbor should eat, and my neighbor should drink, and my neighbor should have clothes to wear. This is a very good concern. Humanitarian concern, very good. And there's great reward for this concern also. A person, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ayyuma mu'minin, ayyuma mu'minin, at'ama mu'minan ala ju'r, at'amahu allahu min thimar al-jannah. Any mu'min who finds another who is hungry and feeds him on the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala will give him from the fruit of jannah to eat. وَأَيُّمَا مُؤْمِنٍ سَقَى مُؤْمِنًا عَلَى ظَمْئٍ سَقَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ حَوْبِ If you find a mu'min and you see that he's thirsty and you give them something to drink, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says on the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala will give you a drink from Hawza Gawfar. 
wa ayyuma mu'minin kasa mu'minan ala uran kasahu Allahu min hulalil jannah a person who finds a naked person who lost all their belongings and clothing and arranges to give them some clothes to wear on the day of judgment Allah Ta'ala will provide them from the wardrobe of Jannah. So to, to take care of somebody's hunger, to take care of somebody's thirst, to take care of somebody's poverty is a great humanitarian effort, but it is a small humanitarian effort. It's great, but it is small. Because beyond the thirst of this world, there is another thirst. And beyond the hunger of this world, there is another hunger. And beyond the nakedness of this world, there is another nakedness. Do we think the thirst of this world is tough? Do we think the hunger of this world is unbearable? Do we think the heat in our summer or in the deserts of Africa or in, 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 in Sindh, in Pakistan, in these areas is unbearable? Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the unfortunate people who died without the kalima. These unfortunate people who died without the kalima. And those unfortunate Muslims who had the kalima and sold it for a few dollars. These unfortunate people, yulqa ala ahlin nar al jur, they will be made to starve in Jahannam. Fayardinu ma hum fihi min al adab. This hunger that they're suffering from will be as 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 harsh as the punishment of the fire itself. Fayastaghithun. They will scream and yell. They had nothing. No iman, not once in their life did anything good, and no one made any effort. فَيَسْتَغِيثُونَ فَيُغَاثُونَ بِطَعَامٍ مِّنْ ضَرِيرٍ لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ جُورٍ They will be given poisonous, bitter, thorny food to drink and eat. That will do nothing to them. فَيَسْتَغِيثُونَ They will scream for more food. فَيُغَاثُونَ بِطَعَامٍ دِغُصَّةٍ They will scream and yell and they will ask food, they will be given thorns, long thorns, and they're starving hungry, they will put these thorns in their mouth, and these thorns will get stuck in their throat. فَيَذْكُرُونَ They will remember أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُجِيزُونَ الْغُصَصَ فِي الدُّنْيَا بِالشَّرَابِ That when in this world something was stuck in their throat, they drank water and they passed it down. فَيَسْتَغِيثُونَ They will beg for something to drink. فَيُدْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمُ الْحَمِيمُ they will be given burning hot water to drink in iron mugs. The hunger of the akhirat is severe. The thirst of the akhirat is severe. The problems of the akhirat is severe. And the difficulties of the Day of Judgment are severe. Allah Ta'ala, He says, it's not a small thing. إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَضْلَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَا وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَا وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ it's one humanitarian concern is to see that a hungry man is fed and a thirsty person is given water and a naked human being is given clothes. Who's making thicker for the greater hunger and the greater thirst and the greater need of the akhirat? Who's making that humanitarian concern for humanity? They will beg. They will be given water to drink. Water so hot that when it comes close to their face, their face will melt and fall in. When that water goes into their stomachs, it will cut up their insides, which will come out from their back end. They will say, Udru khazanata jahannam. Call the guardians of jahannam, the gatekeepers. Liyaqdi alayna rabbuk. Tell Allah just to finish us. Just finish us. Give us death. Just give us death. Finish us. The guardians of Jahannam will say to them, Innakum makithun. You're not going anywhere. They will say, Udru Malik. Udru Malik. Call Malik. They will call Malik. Call Malik. Hazrat A'mash, who is one of the Rawis, 
He said from the time they called Malik till the time Malik actually came was 1,000 years. Why? Because Malik is deaf. Malik is the head gatekeeper of Jahannam. And he's deaf. He can't hear. They will say, Udru Rabbakum Fala Ahadun Khairun Mir Rabbikum. We should call Allah now. We have nobody else to turn to other than Allah. Then they will say to Allah, Rabbana, Ghalabat Alayna Shikwatuna, Wa Kunna Kauman Dalin, Rabbana, Akhrijna Minha Fa in Rudana Fa inna Dalimun. They will say, Oh Allah, we admit. We are wrong, we made a mistake, we messed up, send us back, we'll do it right the next time, and this excuse and that excuse. Allah Ta'ala will say to them, إِخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ in, in our English it translates into what we say, shut up and don't talk to me. My respected brothers and my elders in Islam, someone has to cry for those who've not learned to cry for themselves. Someone has to have mercy on those who don't have mercy on themselves. And this was Ummat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ummat Marhuma Rahmatan Lil Nas Wama Arsanaka Illa Rahmatan Lil Alameen. A mercy for humankind. A Rahma. A Rahma. We say Jahannam, we say Jahannam, we hear about Jahannam, Jahannam. My respected elders and my brothers in Islam, it's not a small thing to have to even pass over Jahannam, go through Jahannam, or spend one evening in Jahannam. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jahannam is no joke. Narukum hadihi allati tuqidun. This fire of this world, your elements, your propane, your, your helium, your this other things you burn. Narukum hadihi allati tuqidun. Juz'un wahidun min sab'ina juz'an min harri jahannam. This fire of yours in dunya that you can't put your hand on for one second is only one seventieth of the intensity of the fire of jahannam. Yu'ta bi jahannama yawma idhin laha sab'una alfa zimam. Sab'una alfa zimam. Jahannam will be brought on the day of judgment with 70,000 chains. At each chain, each chain, 70,000 angels holding on to it. Jahannam is no joke. It's no small thing. It's no small thing. ثُمَّ أُوْقِدَ عَلَيْهَا أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ حَتَّى بِيَضَّتْ ثُمَّ أُوْقِدَ عَلَيْهَا أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ حَتَّى سُوَدَّتْ وَهِيَ سَوْدَى مُظْلَمَ The fire of Jahannam was burned for 1,000 years till it became red. Then it was burned again for another 1,000 years till it turned white. And then it was burned again for another 1,000 years till it turned black. And it sits there dark, hot and black. My respected elders and my brothers in Islam, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam couldn't sleep at night. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mutawasilul ahzam, mutawasilul ahzam, always concerned, daimul fikr, laysat lahu raha, and his concern, his concern, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Allah, what will happen to my Ummah? Not what will happen to my hungry Sahaba. He was not concerned. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha salla bin nasi fi masjid nabawi kharra rijalun fi saffi. One whole saf of the muhajireen would fall down and faint out of hunger. In masjid nabawi, one whole saf. Imagine, in this masjid, imagine if one saf fell down just out of starvation. And the, the new Muslims that used to come, they used to say, Haulai Majjanin or Majjanun. These Muhajirin are crazy. They're pagan. It's crazy, these people. Why don't they do something? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He turned around and said to these poor Muhajirin, 
They call Saralik, the poor paupers. Saralik Quraysh, the poor ones, the, the poor muhajireen. He said, لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا لَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Don't worry about this worldly hunger, this worldly poverty, this worldly sickness. Don't worry about this. If you knew what your status was in the eyes of Allah, لَأَحْبَبْتُمْ مَنْ تَزْدَادُ فَاقَةً وَحَاجَةً You would wish Allah Ta'ala make you even more poor and more difficult. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't concerned that my Sahabi is, is hungry, he's thirsty. His concern was how can they be saved from the hunger and the thirst of the Akhirah? The hunger and the thirst of the fire of Jahannam. How can all of my Sahaba be among those who Allah Ta'ala will call on the Day of Judgment? Who Allah Ta'ala will talk to Hazrat Jabir radiallahu anhu. He came once and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hal nara rabbana? Are we going to get to see Allah on the Day of Judgment? Hal nara rabbana? So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, هَلْ تَتَمَارَوْنَ مِنْ رُؤْيَةِ الشَّمْسِ وَالْقَمَرِ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ Do you have any difficulty seeing the moon on the 14th night? He said, no, no, we have no difficulty seeing the moon on the 14th night. Everybody can see it without having to look over someone else's shoulders. He said, كَذَلِكَ لَا تَتَمَارَوْنَ مِنْ رُؤْيَةِ رَبِّكُمْ Like this, you will have no difficulty seeing Allah on the Day of Judgment. وَلَا يَبْقَى فِي ذَلِكَ الْمَجْلِسِ رَجُلٌ إِلَّا حَاضَرَهُ اللَّهُ مُحَاضَرًا Not a man will remain in that blessed gathering where Allah will not have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. One-on-one -on -one conversation with Allah. Achha, what is Allah Ta'ala going to talk to us about? فَيُذَكِّرُهُ بِبَعْضِ غَدَرَاتِهِ The first thing Allah Ta'ala is going to talk to us about, He's going to remind us of our sins. He's going to say, hey, remember on that day, that time you did this sin? Remember on that day, that time? First, you're going to remind us of our sins. So this person is going to say to Allah, Ya Allah, afalam taghfirli? Oh Allah, didn't you already forgive all my sins? Allah Ta'ala will say to him, فَبِسِعَةِ مَغْفِرَةِ بَلَغْتَ مَنْزِلَتَكَ هَذِهِ If I didn't forgive all your sins, would you be standing here talking to me? فَبَيْنَ مَا هُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ إِذْ غَشِيَتْهُمْ سَحَابَةٌ مِّنْ فَوْقِهِمْ while this discussion between Rabb, Allah, and Abd, the servant, إِذْ غَشِيَتْهُمْ صَحَابَةٌ مِّنْ فَوْقِهِمْ From above, a cloud will come. فَأَمْطَرَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ طِيبًا لَمْ يَجِدُوا مِثْلَ رِيحِهِ شَيْئًا قَطُّ It will rain such a beautiful perfume that people have never smelled such a fragrance before. فَيَقُولْ Allah Ta'ala will say, قُومُوا إِلَى مَا أَعْدَدْتُ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْكَرَامَةِ وَخُذُوا مَا اشْتَهِيتُمْ Now go on and enjoy what I have prepared for you. وَخُذُوا مَا اشْتَهِيتُمْ Take and enjoy whatever you desire. فَنَأْتِي سُوقًا قَدْ حَفَّتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ لَيْسَ يُبَاعُ فِيهَا وَلَا يُشْتَرَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا الصُّوَرْ مِنَ الْرِجَالِ وَالْنِسَاءِ We will come to a market, inshallah. Let Allah make us all among those, inshallah. We will come to a marketplace. حَفَّتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ all malaika are hanging around at the stands offering their goods. And لَيْسَ يُبَاعُ فِيهَا وَلَا يُشْتَرَى There's no buying and selling, no cash register, no debit card machine, nothing. لَيْسَ يُبَاعُ فِيهَا وَلَا يُشْتَرَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا الصُّوَرْ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاءِ You will find in that bazaar shapes of, of all the possible human features that anybody could want to have. You get to choose what kind of a nose you want that week. You get to choose what kind of ears you want to have that week. You get to choose how your eyelashes and face should be that week. And this person will go home completely looking new. His wife will say, who are you? He'll say, I am me. And he will see her and say, who are you? While he was away, she became even more beautiful. Huh? My respected brothers and my elders, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Ta'ala showed him a little bit more than what the normal human being was able to see. And we believe him. We believed him. Even though what he says may not make sense to us, but we believe him because we trust him. He is our Nabi. He is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what he said is true. What he said is true. And if he told us these things are there, we believe him that these things are there. And if he told us these things are going to happen, we believe him these things are going to happen. And he also told us how to prepare. He also taught us how to prepare. 
He told us, don't get so caught up in this world, the luxury, the glamour, the gold, and the silver. And he said, don't get too caught up in these things. Because you'll never be able to have enough to satisfy yourself. لَوْ كَانَ لِبْنِ آدَمَ وَادِيَانِ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ لَبْتَغَى وَادِيًا ثَالِثًا وَلَا يَمْلَأُ جَوْفَ بْنُ آدَمَ وَلَا يَمْلَأُ جَوْفَ بْنَ آدَمَ إِلَّا التُّرَاب إِلَّا التُّرَاب He says, if you give a man two valleys of gold, he'll say, جَزَاكَ اللَّهِ And then he'll ask you to give another one. لَبْتَغَى ثَالِثًا because the truth of the matter is, the only thing that can fill the desire of a human being is the dirt of the grave. The dirt of the grave. As far as the desires are concerned, Allah Ta'ala says, hold on. Hold on. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِيهِ الْأَنْفُسُ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنُ وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Hold on to your desires. Don't try to fulfill your desires in dunya. Hold on. Because I've made a place for you where you will be allowed to fulfill all of your desires. All of your desires. مَا تَشْتَهِيهِ الْأَنفُسْ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنْ وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ You'll be able to stay there and live there forever and forever. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once asked by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He says, الْجَنَّةُ مَا بِنَاؤُهَا What's the, what's the infrastructure of the Jannat like? Tell me a little bit about what's, what's the building in Jannat going to look like? Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَبِنَةٌ مِّنْ فِطْرَةٍ وَلَبِنَةٌ مِّنْ ذَهَبٍ وَمِنَاطُهَا الْمِسْكُ الْأَغْفَرُ وَحَشِيشُهَا الزَّعْفْرَانُ وَحَصَبَاؤُهَا اللُّؤْلُؤُ وَالْيَاقُوتُ One brick of gold, one brick of silver, the mortar in between made of mushk, the grass made of saffron, the pebbles in front of your home, gold and silver. مَنْ يَدْخُلُهَا يَنْعَمْ وَلَا يَبَأَسْ يَخْلُدْ وَلَا يَمُوتُ Those who are allowed to enter into Jannah, يَخْلُدْ وَلَا يَمُوتُ They will live forever, they will never die. Imagine, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يُؤْتَى بِالْمَوْتِ كَالْكَبْشِ الْأَمْلَحِ فَيُقَفُ بَيْنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ وَهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ Death will be brought in the form of a ram and put in between Jannat and Jahannam. It's such a place where all the people of Jannat can see death and all the people of Jahannam can see death in the form of a ram. Fayuzbah, death will be slaughtered. فَلَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدًا مَا تَفَرْحًا لَمَا تَأَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدًا مَا تَحُزْنًا لَمَا تَأَهْلُ النَّارِ if anybody could die of excitement and happiness, the people of Jannah would be ecstatic and die of happiness knowing that what they have will never be taken away from them. And not a small little Jannah, 250 feet long by only 150 feet wide. No. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Adana ahlul Jannah. The lowest, lowest, smallest, smallest, teeniest, tiniest, first floor of the Jannah, basement level. أَدْنَا أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ أَلَّذِي لَهُ ثَمَانُونَ أَلْفَ خَادِمٍ 80,000 servants Not all crowded like this Properly spread out to serve you nicely ثَمَانُونَ أَلْفَ خَادِمٍ وَإِثْنَتَانِ وَسَبْعُونَ زَوْجَةً 72 wives 72 wives That's a small Jannah And a medium-sized Jannah A medium-sized Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said more or less to the effect, a person who contributes to a masjid. How much contribution he made? Enough to go towards this much of the construction. How much is this? Maybe 10 cents? 20 cents? How much did he contribute? He contributed enough to go towards the construction of one hand span of that masjid. This is so appreciated by Allah that in return for him in Jannah, Allah Ta'ala has made 40,000 cities. In each city there are 40,000 properties. In each property there are 40,000 residences, buildings. And in each one of those buildings there are 40,000 rooms. And in each one of those rooms there are 40,000 beds. The bed has something on it. 
And in that room, there are 40,000 dastarkhan. And on each dastarkhan, there are 40,000 plates of food. And on each plate, there are 40 different types of food. وَيُؤْتَى الْمُؤْمِنْ مِنَ الْقُوَّةِ مَا يَأْتِي ذَلِكَ الطَّعَامُ وَالشَّرَابُ وَالْنِسَاءُ فِي يَوْمٍ وَاحِدٍ A mu'min will be given enough kuwa, enough strength to eat all of that food, finish all of that drink, and visit all of those women before the day is over. Jannah. Allah Ta'ala has made it for us. إِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ لَغُرَفًا Allah Ta'ala says, where you get lost in this world? Where did you get lost? In the jannati la ghurafan, yura zuhuruha min butuniha wa butunuha min zuhuriha. You have in your jannah such lofty, beautiful crystal balconies you can see from inside and out and outside to in. In the jannati jannatain min zahabin aniyatuhuma wa ma fiha. وجنتين من فضة آنيتهما وما فيها وما بين القوم وبين أن ينظروا إلى ربهم إلا رداء الكبرياء على وجهه في جنة عدن. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم says in Jannah Allah Taala has made for you for me inshallah for all of us inshallah two special palaces in Jannah where everything is made out of gold everything is made out of gold آنيتهما وما فيها not only the utensils, the furniture, everything is made out of gold. And two other palaces where everything is made out of silver. And the only thing stopping you from looking at Allah whenever you want is one sheet of the greatness of Allah that lies between you and Allah. Where is this Jannati Adan? My respected brothers and elders, Allah Ta'ala made lots of things for us. Trees in Jannah, one tree, one tree. Ma fil Jannati shajaratun illa wasaquha min dahabin. There's not one tree in Jannah whose trunk is not made out of solid gold. Solid gold. And how big is one tree in Jannah? Yasiru rakibu fi ghilliha mi'ata amin la yaqta'uha. Our horse rider will run for 100 years to try to cover the circumference of that tree and not be able to com cover that circumference. And Allah Ta'ala will give us a crown. Allah Ta'ala will give us a crown. Inna alayhi muttijan. Muttijan? A crown. Adana lu'lu'atin minha. The smallest pearl in that crown is so glittering, glamorous, and beautiful, the smallest pearl. أَدْنَا لُؤْلُؤَةٍ مِّنْهَا لَتُضِيءُ مَا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ It is so bright, it is enough to light up, brighter than the sun, the distance between the east and the west. And you get to wear jewelry in Jannah. In this dunya, men don't wear jewelry. Because Allah Ta'ala says that, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْمُتَشَبِّهِينَ بِالْرِّجَالِ الْمُتَشَبِّهِينَ بِالْرِّجَالِ مِنَ النِّسَاء Allah Ta'ala says men shouldn't dress like women and women shouldn't dress like men. But men don't wear jewelry and you know these different kind of things that nowadays people they do. Men don't do that because in the akhirat Allah Ta'ala has lots of jewelry for you. Lots of jewelry. What kind of jewelry? Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Law anna rajula. لو أن رجلا one man من أهل الجنة from the people of جنة اطلع if he were to just peek into this world فبدت أساوره and one of his bangles bangles like we don't wear bracelets in this world but in the آخرت we get to wear bangles nice big gold ones big chain and gold and you know cool stuff فَبَدَتْ أَسَاوِرُهُ لَطَّمَسَ ضَوْءَ الشَّمْسِ كَمَا تَطْمِسُ الشَّمْسُ ضَوْءَ النُّجُمُ When this little teeny tiny bit of his bracelet becomes exposed, if it were to become exposed in this world, the light of the sun would disappear like the stars disappear when the sun comes out. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said this, this is also for dunya. It is? What is this? 
this is also for dunya. We don't have to have this in, in Jannah. In Jannah we won't have. And the Allah says, keep it, in, keep it in dunya. And I'll take it back from you in the other. I'll take it back from you. And if you don't keep it in this room, I'll give it to you over there. يَدْخُلُوا أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةِ جُرْدٌ جُرْدٌ مُرْدٌ جُرْدٌ مُرْدٌ مُكَحَّلِينَ أَبْنَاءُ ثَلَاثِينَ أَوْ ثَلَاثٍ وَثَلَاثِينَ يَدْخُلُوا أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةِ جُرْدٌ مُرْدٌ مُكَحَّلِينَ the people of Jannah will enter Jannah with no extra body hair. No hair in your armpits. No hair in the other parts of your body where you don't like to see hair. And murdun, no beard. Amrad, murdun. Mukahhaleen, their eyes having like permanent surma. You know kuhul? Permanent surma. And how old will they be? Abna'u thalathin, 30 years old. Aw, thalathin wa thalathin, maybe 33 years old. And... Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna fil jannah la mujtama'an min al-hur al-ayn yarfa'na bi aswatin lam yasma'i khala'iku mithlaha lam yasma'i khala'iku mithlaha nahnu al-na'imatu fala nabas wa nahnu al-radiyatu fala naskhat wa nahnu al-na'imatu fala naskhat tuba liman kana lana wa kunna lahu there's a big group of hurireen in Jannah and they're waiting and they're waiting and don't think that the hurireen can't see you right now Allah Ta'ala made it in such a way that whatever wrong things you do or wrong things people do to you Allah Ta'ala has allowed the hurireen to see this from their balconies in Jannah Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says أي ممرأة أي ممرأة تؤذي زوجها في الدنيا إلا قالت زوجته من الحور العين لا تؤذيه قاتلك لا إنما هو دخيل عندك يوشك أن يفارقك إلينا. Any woman who gives trouble to her husband in this dunya, oh nagging and you didn't do this and nagging at her husband in this dunya. The Hurireen from the balconies of Jannah, they say to this woman, leave him alone. May Allah finish you. He's just a temporary visitor with you. Soon he will leave you and come to us. Huh? Allah Ta'ala is also watching us. But our damsels are also keeping an eye on us. Like they say, they say Santa knows where you are and what you're doing, so you should be good at this time of the year. No lie. Uh, Allah Ta'ala is watching us. Hurireen is also keeping an eye on you. You should have some shame. Huh? My respected okay. elders and my brothers. This is what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he invited humanity. Allah Ta'ala himself says, Wallahu yadru ila daris salam. Come, come. What did you get stuck in this world? You got stuck in this world. What was? What is there in this world? What got you stuck? Come to Darus Salam. Come to the garden of Allah. Come to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my respected brothers and my this was the concern of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can every human being, every human being be saved from the fire of Jahannam? Muslim, non-Muslim, white, black, Indian, Pakistani, Bengali. We don't look at anybody belonging to any tribe or background. We say he's a human being, she's a human being from the ummah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How together can we work? to save humanity from the fire of Jahannam. What can we do together? This is our effort. Simple effort of having raham. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَن لَمْ يَرْحَمِ النَّاسِ مَن لَمْ يَرْحَمِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَرْحَمْهُ اللَّهِ The very small hadith. مَن لَمْ يَرْحَمِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَرْحَمْهُ اللَّهِ A person who develops the attitude that I don't care less. I could, uh, I'm not doing it, it's not my fault. Well, go ahead, burn in hell, I don't care. A person who develops this type of an attitude towards humanity and uh, a disconcern about the well-being of humanity, even though they may spit in your face, even though they may do whatever they may do to you, 
the end of the day, we want to save ourselves and save humanity from the fire of Jahannam. And a person who's not concerned, man lam yarham min nas, Allah Ta'ala said, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, lam yarhamhu Allah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, ar-rahimun yarhamhum ar-rahman. Only those who find it in their heart to have mercy on humanity and sympathize with people's situation and not, be, oh Allah, destroy them and finish them and, and become excited and happy when a tornado comes and destroys them. Astaghfirullah. No, ay hey Allah, you have mercy on them. Ay hey Allah, like Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ka'annahu yahki nabiyyam min al-anbiya. He's as if he's telling the story of a Nabi. يَمْسَحُ الدَّمَ عَنْ وَجْهِهِ وَيَقُولُ اللَّهُمَّ غَفِرْ لِقَوْمِي فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself actually, in Uhud. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, in Uhud, he's wiping, he got an injury in his head. And his head was bleeding. His teeth got knocked out. His head is bleeding. His teeth got knocked out. And there was no, uh, you know, surgical dentist at that time, just, you know, put it back in, replace it, get dentures. It affected, your teeth are gone, gone. He's wiping blood off his forehead, and he's saying, Allahumma ghafir li qawmi, fa innahum la ya'lamu. Oh Allah, forgive my people. They didn't do it on purpose, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. Love for humanity. Mercy for humanity. Sympathy for humanity, not just to feed them and clothe them. The fikr that Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had, my ummah, my ummah. What will happen to my ummah? Nabi sallallahu alaihi fikr and his concern. What will happen in the qabr? What will happen on the day of judgment? What will happen at the mizan? What will happen on the sirat, the bridge, long bridge over the fire of Jahannam? Who will get across? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stand at the corner of the bridge, hold our hand and say, Ya Rabbi, sallim, sallim. Ya Rabbi, sallim, sallim. Ya Rabbi, sallim, sallim. He will hold our hand and take us across, those of us who are having difficulty. Love for humanity. Fikr for humanity. When Sahabi came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulallah, I want that Allah should have raham on me on the day of judgment. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Irham nafsak, warham ibadah, yarham ka rabbuka, yawm al qiyamah. I want that Allah should have mercy on me on the day of judgment. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Have mercy on yourself. And have mercy on all the slaves of Allah. You will find Allah showering His mercy on you on the Day of Judgment. So my respected brothers and my elders in Islam, a time has come for me and a time has come for all of us to decide how selfish I am, how selfish I am, and how much of my time is spent on me and how much of my time is spent on the Ummah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't spend his time on himself developing and preparing and establishing his dunya, his fikr and concern, and not him alone, all of his companions, was for the ummah. And they gave time for the ummah, for the whole ummah. And their concern was every human being. What am I willing to do? What am I willing to do? Will I continue the way I am? Will I continue the way I am? Yeah, I'm content with the condition, my condition and condition of humanity? My respected brothers and my elders in Islam, a time comes, Allah Ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ A time comes where you ask yourself, is there even a heart in here or is there a stone in there? Is there a heart in there? When is it going to melt? When is it going to soften? When will I understand? When will I give time? What else needs to happen? What else needs to happen? What else needs to go wrong before I get up and say now it's time that I gave some time to the ummah? Not all our time. Nobody's asking just abandon your wife, give talaq to your wife, make your children all orphans, give up your job and become a malang and just go. Nobody's saying do that. Our elders are just asking us to divide our life into three. Give one third to Allah, one third to your family, 
and one third to your income. One third to Allah, one third to your family, and one third for your income. Eight hours, eight hours for your job, eight hours for your home and your domestic necessities, and eight hours to the masjid. Eight months of the year for your home, four months of the year to the masjid. Taqazas of deen. 20 days of the month to your family and your own domestic needs, and 10 days for deen. One third, one third, one third. Who's ready for this tartib? Make me yet, inshallah. One third. It's time that I did something, inshallah. Time that I made niyat. Time that I, I gave something, inshallah. Now, those who've not yet been already for four months can stand up and make me and be ready now to go for four months. And again, this doesn't mean that you stand up and then we grab you, we tie you up, and from here we put you on the airplane and take you. No. You make niyat here means now we go back and you figure out how and when it's possible. How and when it's possible. But at least you've shown Allah, I'm not happy with the condition of being in my own life. And I, and, I, and, I, and I would like to have mercy on myself and humanity. And I'm willing to give some time. Yes, I have a job. Yes, it might pinch my dunya a little bit. But oh Allah, if Sahaba could bear hunger for the ummah, and not a little bit of hunger. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Khandaq, Sahaba shakawna ila Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama an jur wa rafa'na an butunina an hajarin hajarin فرفع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن حجره عن حجره. He said in Khandaq we complained about our hunger to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. We're hungry. If they're hungry, our families are hungry. Children are hungry. And here you're putting us in the effort of Deen, digging a trench. We're hungry. Get us a job. We'll do some work and earn some money and fill up our fridges and freezers with groceries and eat some food. And each of them showed Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one stone tied to their belly. One stone. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifted up his shirt and showed them he had two stones tied to his belly. That's how the effort of deen is done. Why? Because there's a big da'wat waiting in Jannah. A big dastar khan is in Jannah. A big dastar khan. In dunya, Allah Ta'ala said, work. Work hard. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي Kabad. Kabad. Kabad means toil and work. And Faida Faramata Fansa Waida Rabbika tire yourself until death comes and then take some rest in the grave and enjoy on the day of judgment and benefit and bliss in Jannah forever. This is Tartib. Who's ready for this Tartib, inshallah? MashaAllah. Make niyat, inshallah. Stand up and make niyat. Even if you've been for four months, make four months every year, inshallah. What's stopping us? What's stopping us? Who's stopping us? Make niyat, inshallah. Show Allah we're ready. Show Allah we want to do something. Show Allah that we want Allah to accept us, inshallah. And Allah will make it possible, mashallah. MashaAllah. Allah Ta'ala accept all of us, inshaAllah. Every year, four months, mashaAllah. All of us, inshaAllah, should make me. The Ummah is waiting. The Ummah is waiting. Someone needs to cry for those who are not crying for themselves. Someone needs to cry. Someone cried for us. Look how far we came. We need to 